We got something a little bit different today. A Pokemon Emerald version. Let me show you what's going on. We have one ripped off pad from the battery. So what the customer would like me to do is to attempt to repair this pad. And he would like me to put a new battery on it. Unfortunately, this is one of the consoles I do not have in my personal collection. So I won't be able to show you the uh, end result. We can go ahead and repair this pad. And I will definitely get him to send a picture over of it working. Assuming we get it working. First thing we're going to need to do is I don't really know what this wire is all about. Maybe it was their attempt to replace the missing pad. But we're going to remove that wire. We're going to remove their old battery. Then we'll address the pad and go from there. So as stated, the first thing we're going to do is remove this wire, which is soldered on here. And then we're going to flip the board and work on the pad here. And in order to remove this wire, I must set up my equipment. While I set up my equipment, let me throw up my expected temperatures for this job. These temperatures are brought to you by the associate links in the description. If you go to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. And I greatly appreciate you. It won't cost you an extra dime. Let's add some flux. So we can desolder this guy. And in order to desolder him, we're just going to stick our iron on there and lift on the wire. Get it off that pad. Do not believe it's attached to anything on the other side, so we'll just pull it off here. Okay, next task is we need to get this battery off of here. Shouldn't be too difficult. Same deal, we'll just stick the iron on there and slide it off. I'm going to mark that as their old battery, just so I don't confuse it. Now we can get an idea what's going on here with the pad. So, it appears we need a connection here, for sure, and that whole trace is gone. So we'll have to hook it up here somehow, and then it's connected to this trace here. Is there any other connection spots that I'm missing? Not that I can see. Okay, so we will have to solder to this component no matter what, and then make connection here. Here's not going to be too difficult, this one's going to be a little more of a challenge and of course we'll UV coat the pad down to secure it because there's really I mean those two solder small solder points are not going to be enough to hold it we want no flux on here and we may be able to cut that over to the point where it can connect and connect but we'll see that's a lot of precise cutting so I don't want to say too soon that's the right width, a little too long. Cut that much off and take a look. We might actually be able to connect it. But we for sure can connect it to this. That's two really small solder joints. We're going to have to trim this down a little bit more. We don't want it hitting anything else. It's a little too big. The adhesive is not going to be enough on this to keep it down. Plus, if we use any flux, yeah, I think we can do it. Maybe without jumper wire. Grab our handy dandy grinding pin. Give ourselves a runway here on this one. I may actually use minimal flux here because I actually want the solder to bridge. If you don't want solder to bridge, flux is your solution. But in this case, solder bridging is a good thing. In theory, will it be in fact? Okay, that side is connected. Believe it or not, this side may be more of a challenge. Solder is not adhering like I would like. There we go. That's what I wanted to happen. I think we are safely soldered down. I'm not going to worry about tinning the whole pad until we get it secured down. Yeah, that is solid. I'm moving the whole board with the pad, so I'm reasonably happy with that. Let's make sure we're not touching anything we shouldn't be. Don't see anything. Time to make a miss. Flux and UV coating do not mix. And there's a little bit of flux core in the solder I was using. So let's get rid of that. We're going to UV coat this all the way around going to be providing a lot of our security 
And ideally, when we go to solder the new battery on, it'll hold the pad down so that it doesn't get stuck up into the leg and detach from our solder joints, which are very tiny and fine. We've grabbed our big UV lamp. We're just gonna sit it there and walk away for about 10 to 15 minutes, let that get a good thorough cure, and we'll come back and finish the job. I hope you're getting value out of this video. If you find this something you're not ready to tackle just yet, just a reminder, I do offer these services, both local and mail-in. Just head over to micromage.repair, click free quote, fill out the form, and I'll get back to you personally. If you mention this video, I'll give you a 10% discount on this repair. It's been a little bit. Hopefully we are solid, but we'll check it out and make sure. That feels rock solid. We're not getting any mushiness. Excellent. We'll put it to the test though. Just add some to our tip and spread it out as much as we can. Not disturbing our connection. We can test it though and make sure. We're connected. And we're connected. Excellent. It still has to survive us putting the battery back on too. Let's address this other pad. Grab some fresh wick. Not rip off another pad, ideally. Very well. We need to get it aligned with our other pad. Add some flux over here. I'm a little concerned with how much torque will be on the pad, but we'll see. Try to add more solder here. Ah, we disconnect our pad. That is unfortunate. I don't think our pad idea is going to work out. It's just too much torque for this method, I think. There's no copper. Solder that too. So we are actually going to have to run jumpers. And just leave this battery free hanging, I guess. Not real happy about that. Wish we had a better way. A lot of upward springy force. The pad would have to be pretty strong to survive that. This is going to be a much less elegant solution, but I don't think I have a great way of putting a pad down that'll survive that much torque. Not even certain like a super glue would work. Bummer deal. We can come from this test pad here to the leg and then from that resistor. Not what I wanted to do. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Get it on the screen for you. Let's grab the black eye easies. They handle wire a lot better than any tweezer I have ever had otherwise. So I only use them for this. I need to flip this around. It's on there, but I'd like a little better joint. That looks like a pretty good joint. Pull the leg off the wire. Reach in again. Check it onto this side. Okay. Do that is on there. And I'll show you a little solder up here as well. Should be a pretty good connection on that. Okay, we are connected. We've got enough slack on the wires where if this bounces around, it's not going to break the connection, I think. We're going to clean it up. Anybody has suggestions on how I could have done that pad a little more secure, by all means, feel free. I mean, I guess we could have tried super glue, but super glue definitely would have taken more time. Grab the lamp one more time, let that cure, and I'm afraid this will be about as far as we can take this one. Okay, for your reference, this is what it was doing before. And this is what it's doing now. Working great. If you got value out of this video, I think you'll get value out of this one. And I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.